Great, great. Looks like we're getting a, a good recording going now. I uh, want to welcome you all here to the webinar. I'm John Kay, um, who's I'm the Director of Traditional Arts Indiana. It's a statewide folk arts program. It's a partnership between Indiana University and the Indiana Arts Commission. And we exist basically to identify and document and promote uh, the folk and traditional arts. Uh, traditional music, traditional craft, traditional uh, uh, dance, all different forms of expressive culture. And for the past uh, year or so now, we've been doing periodic webinars to try to uh, promote uh, artists in ways that we can, uh, give them the skills that they need. I want to apologize. I, I think there's a couple folks who tried to log in the last time we offered this. We're going to offer this webinar, and uh, we didn't have it. My son fell and broke his arm the morning of uh, that webinar, and I had to, to cancel out on that. So I apologize to you all. Uh, I should say that this webinar was brought to you by uh, funding from the Indiana Arts Commission, which receives funds directly from the National Endowment uh, for the Arts. You're probably asking yourself, well, why is a folklore, someone like John, teaching a workshop on WordPress. I'll be the first to admit, I'm not a WordPress guru. I'm not a, a big-time WordPresser. Uh, but I think it's an important resource that I want people to, to know about. The uh, main thing I want you to, to learn from this is that uh, kind of the big overview so you can go out and discover more. I got into a situation when I first came here to Traditional Arts uh, Indiana that uh, we had an old website that was built on a platform that was not uh, very strong and uh, we only had to try to keep it keep it going. I used a joke that was created on bailing wire just trying to keep it uh, keep it existing uh, and we hobbled along for years using that because I thought, I don't know anything about websites. Uh, and then I discovered WordPress uh, and found out that this is a great alternative for an artist or a musician or a, or a small organization uh, that supports to use this type of resource. A little bit of housekeeping on the structure of the webinar. If you look over in the chat, you can see where people are already talking, uh, uh, talking back and forth. I sound looks like audio keeps going in and out. Um, how is it sounding for everybody else? Sometimes the audio will go in and out uh, to based upon connections. Uh, there will also sometimes be a slight lag, uh, Chad is telling us. Chad will be our referee, you might say, working in the chat room, because uh, with my bifocals, I can't always see what's going on um, there. So it does sound like there might be a problem with the audio. Hopefully, Chad can get that going. I think we're getting a good, strong signal here. Uh, if there are problems that persist, then we can always... Uh, my mic might be a little bit hot. Okay, I'll back off the microphone a little bit. Maybe that'll help. Is that better? Turned it down just a hair. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, I want folks to just kind of be inspired to try to, to pick up more of this. So let's go ahead and, uh, and jump right into this, and hopefully the sound and uh, the lag problem that we're having uh, we'll catch up. I did change the title slightly to for artists and organizations because as I got into it, I realized it wasn't ne anything necessarily special for musicians or folk artists, uh, but artists just in general, as well as for the organizations that seek to serve them. So I, I kind of tweaked that a little bit. When you first are starting to think about what you're going to use your website for, if you're going to build this website, before you dive into it, I recommend that you figure out 
why. You know, some people think, oh, I've got to get a website. Uh, but there's not necessarily a real reason to do it unless you want to have some type of uh, result from it. Uh, I recommend, especially in today's world because of social media and those sorts of things, they're great for building a community. Uh, if you want to get what uh, Seth Godin calls a tribe around you, you want to get a group of people who are dedicated to you, that are interested in what you have to say, the music you have to do, the crafts you have to make. Uh, it's about giving them ongoing information. This is something that WordPress is especially good at. Uh, it's set up for that kind of blogging, sharing, connect, making connections with people. It's also a great resource for building a business. Uh, if you want to sell your CDs, you want to book your band, if you want to uh, sell cra your crafts, you want to do instructional videos, those sorts of things, uh, WordPress is, has tons of features that are, that are kind of hidden in it as well as that can be added onto it that make doing those sorts of things really, uh, really easy. Uh, but I do realize that there are a lot of people out there that say, I don't have time to make connections with people. I don't have time to, uh, to build a community. All I want is for people to be able to get in touch with me. I just want a digital business card that just sits out there on the web and somebody can get to it or I can give it to somebody and they can find me and find out what's going on. Uh, if that's what you want to do, I do not recommend WordPress. Uh, WordPress needs to have you checking in on it, connecting with people, updating it, making sure that the, all the security plugins are, uh, uh, that are, are maintained. It's super easy to do, but it does take, it's kind of like your yard. You can set up your yard to be complex or you can set it up to be easy, but you still have to water it and you still have to mow and stuff. But if you're wanting a digital business card, what I recommend is a uh, uh, a resource called About Me, About.me. And if you go to About.me, uh, you can uh, basically get uh, all the lowdown on this resource. And it's a way to create a one page, uh, a one page. I'm seeing that my cut out and there's no sound, Diane's going. So Chad will type in here in just a second. Uh, Anyway, I'll keep talking. If I have to go back, I will uh, once I see this. Sounds okay to, for me. Okay, so I think it's some of you all are on a dial-up or maybe a slower connection. Uh, what's going to happen is you're going to, the sound will catch up to you eventually. It'll cut out and the data will get transferred to you and it'll catch up. So I'm sorry about that. Um, sometimes you'd think with a DSL it would work, but I'm, I'm sorry about this. Anyway, I'm going to keep going with this because I, I'm not much that I can do about it. But anyway, the, the about.me uh, thing. If you go to like about.me forward slash John K, this is what you're going to see. It's a picture of me. Uh, that's the whole page. And then there's a couple paragraphs, bio about me, my name at the top, title, public folklorist and research scholar, another picture, all my Facebook and Twitter uh, connections, as well as a website uh, uh, down there. So you can be really uh, really creative with these. But the main thing is, is you don't have to you don't have to keep maintaining it. Once you put it up there, unless the data changes, you don't have to go back to it. It just exists out there. Um, anyway. Uh, so if you're just wanting that business card, check there. So let's get into the meat of the topic, WordPress. A tale of two WordPresses, we might say. This is a part that is most confusing for people. There are actually two different WordPress configurations. Uh, the two different WordPress configurations have to do with the fact that there's a free version that exists online that you don't have to do anything to except for uh, put in the content and, and start doing it, and then there's a there's a a paid version that you have you do that has you have to set it up totally differently. And I'm going to go through these two different uh, 
things separately and then you can see which one best suits your needs. So the difference is between WordPress.com, which is the free version, and then WordPress.org, which is a, a, a site that you have to upload to your own hosting and your own domain name and those sorts of things. So WordPress.com. Uh, the thing about WordPress.com, those of you that uh, joined us a few weeks ago or have downloaded and listened to Jeff Davis's talk, he uses WordPress.com. He set up his, his website, 50 Little Birds, uh, as well as Bluestone Folk School and, and his other work, all on WordPress.com. It's a completely free version of WordPress that's hosted on the WordPress site. Uh, so it's super easy. All you have to do is just sign up and start blogging. Um, it, it, you could literally in two minutes have your site up and running and you would be uh, you would be set. Now WordPress.org is a little bit different. Uh, it's a self-hosted version of WordPress. Uh, you don't have to buy uh, or you have to buy a domain name. You have to have you know, like we have traditionalartsindiana.org or my uh, personal website artisanancestor.org or .com um, and you have to own that. You have to buy that and that comes with expenses. And then you also have to build it and you have to maintain it. So uh, why do you use this? It, it gives you more options uh, and it's also easy to expand and also, if you want to monetize it, if you want to turn it into something that you make some money on, um, uh, it's something that you can uh, you can work on a little bit more uh, to do that. I'm looking at the chat room there. Looks like Chad's taking care of things, so I'm going to keep on moving. So, why aren't artists using WordPress? Um, some folks uh, are, are just totally unaware of it. I imagine some of you all probably either haven't heard of it or, or uh, some of you have, have heard of it but uh, think that it's, uh, it's going to be too hard to use. Or you might be, uh, like some of the artists I know, just feel totally exempt from having to do anything with, with the internet or digital resources and that sort of thing. Uh, uh, many people uh, don't use WordPress because they created uh, a site several years ago and they paid a fortune for it or what seemed like a fortune at the time and now they don't necessarily want to move away from it uh, but it's not necessarily working for them. Um, so they have too much invested in what the, the, the site that they already have. Um, and I think that all of these... Uh, while these might be true, I think most of these could, should not be things that deter you. Uh, if something, just because your car works, uh, you, there might be very good reasons to get a better car. Uh, and not just status, it could be it gets better gas mileage, it might be more safe, uh, all those sorts of things. And those are the types of things with working with WordPress that you have to consider. Is it's not just, oh, I'm going to rebuild it and it's going to look different. Has to do with its functionality, its uh, its stability, uh, the fact that it's updated, and so there's certain security uh, uh, comforts in doing that. So even if you've got your own website, I think that this might be something worth considering eventually migrating over to. Uh, like buying a car, you don't have to run out and buy it right away. Uh, you can wait and judge when it's time to make that transition. Uh, on an ongoing basis. Uh, so, should you use the WordPress.com or the WordPress.org? Let's get into that. Uh, let's talk about WordPress.com first. Uh, it's really easy and it's free. Now, those are two things that I know that small nonprofit organizations, churches, whatever, artists, uh, musicians, those are two. Uh, factors that really kind of play into all of this that can't be underestimated. Uh, free and easy is important. Uh, there's not that many steps to set it up. Uh, you don't have to worry about security and updating it all. 
that basically the folks at WordPress take care of all of it for you. All you have to do is put in your pictures and your videos and your write your text, and it just continues to uh, to grow. Uh, on WordPress.com, it, it's amply powerful. It, it's plenty strong enough to do just about anything that you need it to do. Uh, and I would say that for most hobbyists, it's all that they need. If you're just you know want something for your bluegrass band uh, to kind of tell people you're playing and you like playing a few local gigs and that sort of thing, but you don't have any CDs, you don't uh, you're not doing much, you just want to share information about yourself, then this is definitely uh, the type of resource to do. Um, the downside of using WordPress.com is, I've said this to people, it's like building your house on somebody else's land. Ultimately, you don't own it. Uh, WordPress, the company that owns Word, the WordPress uh, software, is, uh, is really a wonderful company. I, don't, I trust them a lot more than a lot of other uh, dot-coms like Facebook and, and, and some of those other orgs. Uh, but... Uh, Ultimately, you don't own it, and they might take it down. They might decide to start charging. Uh, they could change the, the way in which it's used. So I would recommend that the, if you're fine with that risk, stay with the .com. If that's something that concerns you, think about going to the .org. Um, another thing is affiliate links are not allowed. One of the things that once you start blogging and writing and sharing information about what crafts you make or what uh, what music you play, uh, you might want to sell your CDs or you might want to sell equipment like you use in your band or you might want to uh, sell some of the supplies or tools that you use to, to make the pottery that you do. Um, and you could sell those on your site through an affiliate program, like through Amazon.com or something like that. You're connected with them. In the .com, the WordPress.com, you're not allowed to do that. Uh, in fact, technically the service is not intended or allowed to be used as a business or for profit. And so they will, uh, I won't say that they will shut you down. It's, um, it's, uh, it's basically... Uh, you're you're at your own risk in doing that. I know some people who sell on Etsy that use the WordPress.com, but they sell everything through Etsy and they just use the blog to write about this stuff and then they link out to it, which seems to be acceptable to WordPress. Um, so the WordPress.com is free. You basically sign up and your name would be. This is in reference to Diane Hunter's uh, question here. You'd sign up, and let's say you, you wanted it under your name, Diane. It, you would go to WordPress.com. You would uh, they would sign up for an account, and you could get DianeHunter.WordPress.com, and that would be your domain name. Uh, it wouldn't be separate and special. It would be your name or the name of your business, and then .WordPress.com uh, is the way that works. Now you can cloak it with, uh, which is what Jeff Davis does with his 50littlebirds.com, uh, but you, basically that's a whole other thing we won't get into at this time. Okay. So WordPress.org, uh, basically that's hosting your own site, and we'll talk a little bit about hosting in a, in a bit, but um, why you should maybe use the self-hosting version. Let's just talk about that. Um, main thing, if .com was like building on somebody else's land, this is the total opposite. This is, you own it. It belongs to you. Uh, for better or worse, you're in control of its content as well as its maintenance. Uh, it's kind of like the difference between renting and owning. Uh, once you buy it, you know they don't, you don't have any that other support from WordPress. You're using what they have, uh, but you have to take care of it yourself. Uh, big part of it is you want your own domain name. Uh, you're going to build up your brand doing that. The WordPress.org sites 
are much more customizable. You can make them look a lot different than the .com sites. You can add on a lot more functionalities. In those restrictions that I mentioned with the .com, there are fewer restrictions on how and what you can use a dot uh, a dot org site for the uh, the WordPress self-hosted option. Uh, and in where the WordPress .com site was totally, you know, uh, maybe it would be fly fishing dot wordpress dot com I could have John's uh, fly tying uh, dot com as my domain name if I wanted it that way Some reasons not to do it is hosting and domain names they cost money you're going to spend probably you know to start out with six seven bucks a month on hosting and then you're going to spend uh, fifteen bucks or so a year uh, to get a domain name, uh, and so not a lot of money, uh, you know, could take uh, your loved one out to uh, to dinner uh, uh, one extra time a month to pay for those differences, but it, it does cost. Um, the other thing that a lot of people aren't prepared for is to be responsible for keeping the site up to date. Basically, there are security patches, and you have to keep updating your site. And that's to keep spammers and and viruses that are out there on the web from infecting your site. And the way you do that is you just keep doing it. And it's literally all it takes is a click of a button and it updates your site. Uh, but you have to go to the site and click that button. Uh, it's not like you have to do anything special. Uh, but you just have to go and you have to check your site, preferably when you're doing the content and making sure everything's up to date. Um, you shouldn't just put it up and leave it up. If you're going to do that, I recommend going to one of those other services that I'm talking about because uh, that's how viruses and things like that uh, happen on the Internet. Uh, the .org version, the, the self-hosting version, is also a little more complicated to set up initially, but then it, it functions pretty pretty clean and pretty pretty easy afterwards. So I've thrown out these these ideas of buying a domain and getting hosting and, and that sort of thing. Um, so what does that mean? All hosting is a dom uh, well, let's talk about domain names first. The domain name is basically the uh, the place where you can get uh, that you type in what your web address is, and you want to buy a domain, a place that's your own, that's recognizable and something that people are going to be searching for. Uh, like we have traditionalartsindiana.org as well as .com, and they point to the same place. Um, and where do you get these? Uh, and I'll say I've listed companies here. Traditional Arts Indiana, nor do I uh, recommend any of these companies. Uh, we don't not recommend them, uh, but uh, these are commercial entities, and I'm not saying go out and trust and, and do these. But these are fairly reputable companies that have been around for a long time that a lot of folks uh, do recommend. Uh, GoDaddy.com and Namecheap and one in one are three uh, places that you can get a domain name uh, if you want one. Uh, GoDaddy is probably the largest uh, seller of domain names in the world uh, for better or worse. Uh, hosting. What is hosting? Hosting is basically uh, like a server, or like a pipeline. You load up all your inf information on this computer. Your website goes on this computer, and it ports it out. It's, it, it sends it out to anyone who goes looking for it there. And so they make sure that it's, that computer is always on, and always serving up the information that you've put into your files. Uh, back in the olden days, people used to have a computer set up in the back room that ran 24/7. That they ran their website off of. Now there are companies that, for you know, five six bucks a month, you can uh, you can get uh, you can have them host your content uh, for that. And so that's more than worth it for me. Uh, some companies like Bluehost, HostGator, and GoDaddy all do that sort of uh, sort of thing. Uh, Bluehost is one that's uh, has come really highly recommended by a lot of people. So once you've bought your domain name, you have to go to the your host, you sign up for hosting, you insert your domain name, they, 
walk you through the whole process on setting that up. And then you'll get into this control panel, what's called a C panel. And you're, there'll be a little widget where you click a button to install WordPress. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, I always figure if I can do it, just about anybody can. And then you just start building the site. Uh, and the site is built on three or two things, actually. Uh, themes and plugins. Now, themes are basically like the skin of uh, a skin of your of your of your program of your website. It's the it's the veneer you might say. It's what it looks like, and you can change those skins with just you know a click of a few buttons, and it all changes up. Plugins, on the other hand. Are little add-ons or, or that increase the kind of functionality, and so you can use that to add on a mailing list. You can use it to integrate with Facebook and Twitter, or you can use it to to, to host audio, uh, embed your YouTube stream. Just literally thousands of uh, of options of things that you can use uh, plugins to do to make that site uniquely yours and to increase its functionality. So there are themes. And there are plugins. And then you become the artist. You start mixing and matching those themes and plugins. Um, you are installing the plugins to match the theme uh, that you want. And then there's a front end and a back end. We've been looking at pictures of uh, the front end of what people's websites look like. This is what the back end looks like. This is just the dashboard. Uh, for my artists and ancestors uh, uh, site, you can see there over here. There's a dashboard um, right here. Let me uh, uh, the dashboard, and you can see the posts, which are what you write, the number of pages. I can look up at the top and see that I I need to update it. Um, I uh, has all the different links and I can change the appearance. I can install the plugins by clicking here. Uh, I have different tools and I can use this this menu right here to change lots of things about my uh, about my website. Um, so one of the things that people who are just starting out often uh, jump into is there are literally thousands of free themes that are out there. You don't have to pay anything for them. Um, and they're, many of them are great. In fact, I'm for the Artisan Ancestor podcast, I'm using a free theme uh, for that. I think TAI, are, are, we're using a free theme for that as well. Uh, but the thing you have to be mindful of the fact is that there are some programmers who have loaded sites with kind of hidden content, static uh, static links that are potentially harmful or um, doing kind of bad things in the background. Usually they're not like a virus that's going to affect you, but what they're trying to do is game Google and that sort of thing by getting you to install their, their thing and has all types of links to things that they're, uh, uh, that they're promoting. Um, so I recommend you only use themes that come from reputable sites, uh, like downloading them directly from WordPress, and you can use that in that back end. When you click on themes, uh, go back up here. If you go to the to the appearance, uh, you can click on a theme tab, and it would actually uh, you could actually pick a theme that you like and try out four or five. And even after you've been doing your site for three years or ten years. You could go in and change the whole theme and it changes the whole look of your website. Uh, but your functionality will usually continue to work just fine. Uh, one plugin that I uh, highly recommend is the TAC or Theme Authentication, uh, Authentication uh, Checker. Uh, and that's just a plugin that runs in the background and it makes sure that whatever theme that you're using is does not have any bad junk loaded into it. And so just about anybody that's doing anything with WordPress, 
that's one of the plugins that it uh, that they recommend. Uh, one of the uh, we put a, a request out a while back about you know where do we get themes and what uh, uh, where is this uh, authentication checker? Diane is asking. It if you go to the WordPress uh, pane, you can download that. Just type in uh, theme authentication checker or theme checker and it will come up and you just literally click on it and it'll ask you to install it and it, it will be installed. It's really easy to get to. Once you start messing with plugins, uh, they're there and then it will tell you automatically uh, that the theme is, that your themes are good or if there's any that there are any problems with. So you're welcome, Diane. Thank you. Um, I, we don't, as I said before, we don't endorse any companies, but one that I've gotten, uh, some, a company that's got a lot of good independent designers working for them is Theme Forest, and I notice that most of theirs cost about $35 and up. Um, so that's one place you might uh, you might go. Uh, Woo Themes is another one that uh, I've heard some people talk about. Uh, I had some folks contact me uh, before uh, I did this about some 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 programmers are actually charging monthly subscription fees to use their themes. So you get the theme for free, but then you just pay month after month after month for certain services and that sort of thing. And uh, I I don't think that that's necessary. Uh, I've seen people who've paid three four hundred dollars for uh, a theme. Uh, I think for under $100, you should be able to get a, a, a good theme. Then you might want to go with a designer who actually cleans it up and makes it look unique to you. And so you can hire an artist to work with you to, to take a design theme and, and make it your own. But uh, I've never felt the need that I had to do that. So I would not get into a situation where you're making monthly payments. Um, Oh, Doug Boyd, a uh, folklorist down in Kentucky, uh, works at the University of Kentucky, uh, sent me uh, a couple of links to uh, two sites that they were using that were powered by uh, a self-hosted uh, WordPress theme. Uh, the Buffalo Trace Oral History Project, uh, which is looking at uh, Buffalo Trace. It's a bourbon, uh, a Kentucky bourbon company. It's been around for 200 years or so. Uh, and they're doing an oral history project there. And this is uh, the video elements theme uh, from Press 75. And I just thought these were just really beautiful. Then the, the other one is uh, Combat to Kentucky, from Combat to Kentucky, uh, oral history interviews with recent uh, 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 soldiers that are returning home uh, to Kentucky. Two great projects. And you can just see these have video embedded into them. Uh, which they're designed to handle. Uh, it could be really a dynamic site. Looks very, very clean, uh, easy for getting stories out. So let's talk a little bit, now that we've talked about themes uh, and what they look like and, and where you can find them, um, let's talk a little bit about plugins. I mentioned the, the TAC or the, the theme authentication checker. Uh, plug-in, um, but there are some other ones that I think you should probably um, know about. A Kismet, it actually comes loaded in your WordPress theme, but it has to be activated. Uh, this is for the self-hosted version, all of these. The Kismet is basically keeps all the spam and all the 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 kind of bad junk that's out there, the spam comments and things that can often Plague sites, you've probably seen them where uh, they promised uh, to grow or shrink things depending upon uh, what their product claims to do uh, or try to talk you into buying something that you absolutely don't need. Um, a Kismet is a great way to get rid of that. You have to put, you go to their website, you get a little verification number and you put that in your site and it will start filtering out all of those comments and, and keep uh, keep those from, from developing. The other one is uh, a thing called WP Touch, WordPress Touch, and this is for 
sites um, to be viewed on iPhones and iPads and those sorts of things. The WP Touch actually updates um, updates the um, the touch uh, the touch sensitivity things and makes sure that your website actually functions on those other devices. Um, so WP Touch, if you it's really a must-have in today's thing. And I thank uh, Chad for putting a Kismet on there. All of these, also uh, the WP Touch, you can just download that directly from WordPress, uh, from the back end, from your admin panel. Uh, the other uh, three that I, I I use that I like is strictly auto tags. One of the things tags tell the internet, tell things like Google that you exist and what your content is about. And strictly auto tags pulls that out of the text that you've written and tags that, and also gives you uh, a window where you can pick often used tags. Uh, so that's just a way of making your pro your your website a little more searchable, a little uh, more optimized, as they say, for search engines. Um, then uh, one of the things that if you're an artist, an organization, or a um, or a uh, thanks for putting that up there, Chad. Um, if you're an artist, organization, a musician, folk artist, uh, Mailchimp has a free service for I think it's up to 500 uh, email uh, addresses, so you can start collecting emails from people for free, and you basically they can put in their first name, last name, and email address. Uh, and you can get that, and you can put people on like an e-newsletter if you want to do an electronic mailing to them. Uh, and so I think having some type of of email list is a good thing to have on your website. You want to be ask permission to be able to stay in contact with these people who've come to your site. If they like your content, if they like who you are, then you want to start opening up a dialogue with them. And one way to do that is through email list. We've done a lot with podcasts lately um, over the past year and PowerPress is the plugin that we use for podcasts which are radio, uh, internet radio type programs. But they're also if you're a musician be really a great resource if you wanted to give out a, a free song every every week or every month or whatever you want. You could do that easily using the PowerPress plugin. Uh, just record it and it embeds it into your site. Another good um, uh, plug-in that I, I was recommended to me by a, a musician, but I think this is a, a great plug-in. In fact, I put it online for uh, the webinar. You can see my little web page here. And it's called GigPress. Uh, and basically it makes listing, managing uh, of live performances or public events really easy. Uh, it's made for musicians, so you can put... Uh, you can put down your time and location uh, of your gig, uh, where it's located. You can even embed a map if you wanted to, link it with like MapQuest or something. Uh, tell people if there's a charge to get into it. But the big part of it is it also sets up, a, uh, you could download like an iCal, which is an iCalendar um, uh, which, uh, load in. So, People can automatically load this into their web, uh, into their their calendar. Uh, so whether you do Google Calendar or whether you do Apple's Calendar or whatever, you just click it and it'll automatically open up the, your calendar and put it automatically onto it. Uh, also, there's a great back end which helps you keep notes about who your contacts are at these venues, and you can set them up to go along with posts that you have, and really a, a wonderful. Thing. Diane's asking about sermons. It would be great for using sermons uh, if you're if you're preaching or if you're if you're a traveling preacher and you want to do that. If you're asking about uh, the the gig press, if you're asking about pod press, lots of churches and stuff will use or power press. A lot of churches are podcasting their uh, their sermons as well. Uh, so that's a that's a good question. But the gig press would be great for letting people see locations, find out what's programs you're having, if you're having special worship uh, music or something like that happening at your church, you could have that right on your church website.
uh, in the home stretch here. Uh, one resource I, I've been trying to throw in some extra kind of extemporaneous uh, materials. Um, but CD Baby, um, CD Baby is a company that basically it's an online record store for independent record makers. And for years, they you send them CDs, uh, you pay them thirty bucks, and they'll take care of selling your CDs all over the world. I've had my CDs sold in Japan from people ordering them online from from CD Baby. Uh, but the cool thing is, is CD Baby also has a back end where you can make up your own widgets or little uh, HTML codes and you can embed those into your sidebar and stuff. So if you have CDs you want to sell and you don't want to go to all the 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 um, all the issues associated with setting up a retail store on your website, which WordPress can handle uh, there's a thing called one shopping cart that you actually can set up a uh, a, uh, a storefront on your on your site. You could use CD Baby to do your sales. You could also set up to do the same thing with Amazon.com and just have an affiliate link there and you can have it to where people actually buy stuff from your site uh, using, uh, using Amazon as your fulfillment for all of that. So CD Baby is worth checking out if you're a musician. Uh, think about uh, if you're interested in, in retail sales and those sorts of things. Um, they also is a great way for independent musicians to get their the recordings into iTunes. So here they are. Um, I've got two more slides here. One I'm calling above the fold. This is a musician's website. Abigail Washburn, probably a lot of you know her. I love her her music. And one of the things when you're designing your your WordPress site is that everyone has many reasons for having their site. But always think about what is above the fold. Uh, now we all work on content. You don't see the whole web page anymore. Uh, you just see a small screen. And you want to make sure that you communicate your main point in just that one area. Uh, and I thought she did a, a really great job of this beautiful picture. You have all the navigation that you need there. Uh, and so you can basically click to buy her 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 recording. So this is going to cause you uh, to think back to when we first started this webinar. Uh, what is your site about? What do you want? Uh, it, you need to have a call to action. Uh, what what is it that you want people to do? Do you want them to buy your CD? Do you want them to come see you in a live show? Oops. Uh, do you want to see them to come back to um, come back to the site and see follow your blog on an ongoing basis? Sign up for the RSS feed. Decide what it is that you want them to do, uh, and then build your site around that. So many times, it just becomes this catch-all for everything the website does, and really think about. If I'm only going to spend 15 seconds on your website, which is what about what people spend on average, what am I going to try to get you to do? Listen to me, uh, read some content, sign up so I can interact with you, uh, subscribe to my RSS feed. Uh, all those are, are viable options. So think about keeping your main point above the fold. Um, and... That's basically what I had. It's time for questions and comments, and I'm around for a, for a little bit longer here. Plenty of time to talk about what you particularly want. Also, more technical things. If you all want more details, uh, we can uh, we can also schedule additional things. This, uh, if you look at the uh, the chat box, you can feel free to ask any questions in the chat window. Just type them in, and we'll start. We'll try to answer them um, as we go. Uh, WordPress, as I said at the very beginning, I'm not a big uh, WordPress guru, but we'll try to try to help out. Updating WordPress when you have changed the code. Um, as far as updating WordPress, there is a lot of um, a lot of updates 
that come out. I think, the, in fact, this morning was an update for to version 3.4 from 3.3 something something. Um, but anyway, using WordPress, you can literally just click on one button and it updates uh, the code behind the scenes and you won't lose any of your stuff. I recommend you back up your site, but you won't necessarily lose it there. Uh, and it's really quite literally a click of one button and it keeps your, your site up to, up to date. Uh, I lost all kinds of color changes. Uh, sometimes in your WordPress, uh, when you start messing around uh, with the, uh, the style sheet, it shouldn't change when you update your WordPress uh, configuration. What changes is when you update your theme. If your theme gets updated, then you're going to have um, you're going to have to to do something a little bit. Uh, you're going to lose your changes. Um, there's a plugin. I was actually reading about this uh, the other day. I'll try to pull it up here. But there's a, a really great plugin that creates a child theme uh, for your thing, and you won't lose your colors and your the stuff that you've you've changed. Uh, from your your stuff. There's a good podcast called Your Website Engineer, and uh, he uh, he uh, had a did a podcast with a young guy who had created a plugin called Div Layer, D I V L A Y E R. And if you use that to make your changes to your WordPress site, you won't lose your color and font changes that you do. It actually turns your front end into a back end editor. Uh, so I recommend you look for that. So it's div layer, D I V, one word, and then layer, L A Y E R, a second word. Okay, what other questions do you have out there? Uh, do you recommend WordPress for websites that have multiple visual images? Uh, that's kind of a, I'm not sure exactly what you're saying. It's great for uh, putting in lots of pictures. You can use it for like magazine themes where if you want to use real visual or for doing video. Uh, if you're asking about having like multiple looks, um, it tends to stay, you can't have one page look drastically different from the others as far as colors and those sorts of things. So um, uh, it doesn't allow you to do that. But I think I think you'll find that as far as visual images, if you want something that allows you to be really robust photographs and video, WordPress works really great uh, for that. Oh, for visual artists, uh, there are tons of widgets for like slideshows and uh, and that it's perfect for artists. Uh, it's really uh, you can find a nice simple. In fact, I think there's one called Simple Slideshows. Um, that that allows uh, you to do that. You'll find that there are a ton of great themes that are out there just for artists who do want to use them for like a, a digital gallery. Uh, WordPress is perfect for that type of work. So, uh, yeah, that's great. Uh, what other questions do you all have? What about photo galleries? You, it's perfect for photo. If you're a historical society or if you're a, uh, looking to share photographs of your band or, or your craft, or uh, there are tons of great photo galleries uh, plugins that you can use. You can put in single images in your blog post, but what I recommend is you do that and then you can load in a plugin for a number of uh, different slideshows that meet your needs and uh, just go online looking for them. Uh, there are literally probably thousands of slideshows for that would be great for uh, photographers as well as visual artists. What are good ones? Okay, um, I'm going to have to defer to um, refer to Chad. I, uh, Diane, uh, Visual Lightbox, I have heard of that one. Chad knows the one that we're using uh, on the TAI website, and because I've lost the name of it right now. Uh, but Visual Lightbox is good. I think if you just go online, one of the great things about the back end 
uh, looking at WordPress plugins, you can search for like slideshow or photo gallery, uh, and it'll pull up a whole list of plugins. And there are rankings. It'll tell you how many people have reviewed it, how many times it's been downloaded, and it'll give you a one to five stars. A next generation, that's the one we're using uh, uh, here at TAI. Uh, and it's worked out really well for us. And it's free, Chad points out. Uh, some of these plugins, like the themes, you can also pay for. Uh, but for the most part, the plugins are, are, are pretty, pretty free. Uh, I recommend, I always, I don't mess with anything that's got a, like a three-star ranking or less. I only look for four and five-star uh, plugins uh, and ones that have been updated uh, relatively recently. Uh, can you talk more about how to manage your website? Uh, Leslie is asking. As far as managing your website, that can mean two different things. You manage content and you can manage uh, the structure and security of it all. The structure and security, as I said, you just want to keep it up to date, and WordPress does that for you. You have to click the buttons, but it'll tell you uh, when it needs to be updated, your themes and your plugins and your WordPress versions. Um, as far as updating your, uh, your website and managing it, um, you can set it up to be like a blog, and so you've got new content all the time. So... You could easily update or manage your website's content just by putting in new posts all the time. And you can structure it around pages, or you can do category posts. And we actually have all of our pages set up on category posts rather than standalone pages here at TAI. And so if you want my podcasts, even though those are on the, the main page, you click on a tab that says Podcasts. And that's just because I tagged it with being a podcast. It's in a category of a podcast. And so that's an easy uh, easy way to manage uh, those sorts of things. It gets into some a little bit of detail. It's hard to just talk about. It's, it's good to kind of show people more. But um, uh, as far as managing your site, those are the two areas I would, I would talk about. What else can I help you all with? Has this been helpful? Is it helpful what we've covered? Kind of felt like I talked a lot and had some false starts in there. Oh, thank you, Stacy. I'm glad glad you found it to be helpful. Uh, I'm interested in more questions. Uh, can I put up an example from the TA site and, and walk you all through it? Um, I'm not sure. I, Chad might be able to come in and help me share my screen. Let me uh, uh, let me do this. I think you all can have. I can do share my screen. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, Chad's telling me that we're, we it might be uh, it might be uh, a little bit much to try to do this now. I, I could probably um, probably better not uh, better not get into to showing the back end. There's probably a lot of a lot of issues uh, if I get into that. But we will. I promise we'll do another one with with maybe a little more walking through. On, uh, on doing these. I think that might be a better idea. Um, uh, there are a lot of themes for pictures um, uh, that, you, uh, that you could use. Uh, what's called a magazine theme is really uh, what a lot of folks who are doing things with photographs uh, want to look at. Uh, a magazine theme is basically a um, you can have multiple photographs and then you can put a post about them. This is a picture of a barn. This is this barn was in my home community uh, in Shipshawana, Indiana, and was made by blah blah blah. You could write whatever you wanted to about it. Or or here's a banjo I built. Uh, uh, notice this here, and you could see the picture uh, of that. And as far as you know, I can't really get into like saying themes for these things because I think once you start looking. There are literally thousands of them, and I think as long as you look for the ones that you like the looks of, 
and look for the ones that the theme authentication checker uh, is okay with that you download. Uh, you, you'll find lots of lots of good themes. Uh, the artist and ancestor that's a, a free theme called um, uh, Amazing Grace actually, and uh, it's uh, it works out really easy. Uh, you can see at the very top, uh, it has a rotating uh, image of uh, different photographs that have come in, and I, it's very simple to simple to use. Uh, and like I said, it was a free th theme. Uh, I'm, I think it would be probably wouldn't be good for me to bring up the uh, the themes. I, I think I'd rather kind of go through uh, kind of a, a practice time before I start. I don't want to show my back end too much of uh, uh, a double entendre, I think, there. Uh, pulling up uh, all the stuff. But uh, I, think if we, uh, uh, I think if we plan on maybe doing a WordPress 2.0, we might call it, uh, and we'll do a, a little more hands-on uh, showing how we do insert a post and those sorts of things. Uh, so I think we're, that's kind of getting a little bit... Uh, uh, we'll get past it. What I would ask uh, is, that since you're all so enthusiastic on this topic and stuff, send me the things that you would like to see covered in uh, our in our next podcast, in our, in our podcast webinar. If you want to see, you know, how to create a, a WordPress post, how to install uh, WordPress on a Bluehost site. Uh, you can send them to, I'll give you my email address. I'll type that in uh, down here. jk at indiana.edu. And you can send those to me. And either I'll work those up into a, um, a webinar or we'll find somebody else that will do one for you all. What else can I help you all with without getting in? too much into the, the nuts and bolts of doing this on the back end. Looking back through the things. Uh, uh, thank you, Robin, uh, for, uh, for saying this was helpful. Uh, how much does it start to get started again? There's a free version, the .com uh, version where you can just go and you can start you can set up, have a web page in five minutes and it doesn't cost you anything. If you want to start your own site on your own domain and your no own hosting, it's going to cost you about seven bucks a month for hosting. Uh, I use Bluehost and, and they've been great to work with. And um, uh, and then the, the you use WordPress uh, you can upload it there, and you'll need your domain name, which is another $15 a year. Uh, thank you, Janet. I appreciate uh, that. I'm glad it's uh, I'm glad it's been useful for you. So, as far as themes go, like I said, I've seen people spend three, four hundred dollars uh, on a on a buying a theme. Uh, I'd much rather uh, do do that. The div layer. If you go once you get your uh, once you get your your installation of WordPress, you can type in div layer in the uh, in the WordPress search um, uh, for your plugin search uh, on the back end, and it should pull it up. Uh, I can try to find it as well and uh, upload that for you all. Um, Um, uh, there's actually uh, there's a div layer tutorial and all that. If you go to divlayer.com, uh, there's a whole uh, there's a whole website about the thing. D i v l a y e r dot com, and there's a there's a website for it. So uh, I think that you'll find that that's a really useful full plugin. I haven't used it. Uh, I just recently heard about it, but it sounds like a, a good uh, a good resource. It was made by this young guy. He's an undergrad uh, senior, uh, getting ready to graduate. He designed this thing, and it's really, really good, good resource. Thank you, Chad, for putting that out.
What is your website engineer? Uh, basically, we're, we're kind of like tag team wrestling here at, uh, at Traditional Arts Indiana. Uh, Chad helped get us all set up, and now we've got like three people, and we all do different posts and different things. It's one of the other things that WordPress is good for. It doesn't require that there be one person. Uh, sorry, I thought this was a website. Uh, I'm not sure what that means. Oh, the Adobe Connect is uh, just a website um, uh, for doing webinars. It's not our uh, it's not our regular website. We just link out to it. Your web oh for artists and ancestors mine uh, uh, I do it all myself. It's all 100 percent you know uh, a few minutes stolen here, a few minutes stolen there to to do it. Uh, it doesn't take any any high training to to do word WordPress. Most towns you can probably find a, a WordPress designer who, if you get a good theme and you find the plugins that you like, they can help you come up with uh, your look and kind of help tailor it to you. And that usually costs between three and five hundred dollars if you want to spend that. Uh, I know there's some folks here in Bloomington, Indiana, that. Um, uh, that's their business is they kind of help take your your thing and help you get it set up. They're not building a website. They're just building the architecture for you based upon themes and plugins uh, that are out there and then doing the graphic design part of it. Uh, the Your website engineer, I, I think I might know what you're talking about. That was the word... That's the podcast. The, your website engineer is a podcast uh, that I subscribe to. Um, and it's free. Uh, about weekly it comes out. It's like Leslie's typing. We've run about an hour, and so I'm anxious to... to, uh, to answer any questions you all want, but if... Uh, is uh, if there's a need for uh, more, I'm doing. It. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Leslie. Uh, we'll have a follow-up uh, WordPress thing. It looks like we had Franz Boaz join us here uh, here later in the game. That's pretty. I like your books. It's pretty cool. Uh, thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Steve, for for joining in. If you got any questions, uh, let me uh, let us know. Email me those. Uh, anyway, thank you, friends. <laughs> uh, no one's hacking in on me here. Uh, uh, friends, Buzz believes WordPress is culturally revel relevant. Yeah, um, the new primitive art. Anyway, uh, any questions you all have, or what? Welcome to to ask them. Uh, I'll be here for a little bit longer and uh, uh, do that.